Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today wrote up a story of Metastealer. Uh, Metastealer is a malware that has been around for a while, but, uh, well, it keeps morphing as most of uh, this malware. And this particular sample arrived as an Excel spreadsheet. Of course, uh, the victim had to enable macros. It does use the good old DocuSign lure in order to get people uh, to enable macros. And then, well, urgency again here it does claim that you just transferred some money and the attached document will tell you more or possibly of course block the transfer now once you enable the macros then the macros reach out to github github of course being usually considered a benign website and has a lot of good uses but well like with many file storage sites like that it's often being abused used it also uses transfer.sh which uh, we have talked about last week i believe we had a story with transfer.sh that's uh, again a very simple and free file transfer service that's particularly designed to sort of allow simple scripted transfers. Well, all the files being downloaded are then being used to create a DLL and an executable that is then being used to, of course, download additional instructions and connect to the Metastealer command and control servers. There are a couple of red flags here for the user, like having to enable macros and later to actually allow a process called notice.exe to make changes to your device. But all of this, of course, may be considered normal by a user who really just wants to block this stray bank transfer. That's at least sort of what the email claims this is all about. From a detection point of view, I definitely would uh, keep an eye out for transfer.sh. Like I said, there are a lot of legitimate uses uh, for it, but I don't see it used a lot. And in particular, normal users typically shouldn't really use it much. It's really more sort of meant sort of for automated uh, file transfers. Also, of course, the use of GitHub, which also is a legitimate site, but if someone is not a developer, they're probably not going to visit GitHub on a regular basis. And the US Department of Justice today announced that they took down the Cyclops Blink botnet, which was created by the Russian GRU, their main intelligence directorate. This botnet has been infecting um, WatchGuard and Asus routers. It has been a similar botnet a few years ago called Sandworm. And typically these routers are then used either to launch denial of service attacks or to proxy connections, which then of course can be used to make a connection appear from whatever geographic region the attacker would like them to appear without using well-known VPNs. WatchGuard apparently did cooperate here in order uh, to conduct this operation. Not really clear if the malware was removed or if just the connection to the command control servers was severed in this case. Doesn't state if ACES also collaborated here, but uh, ACES is also again mentioned as a company whose routers were affected. And then we got uh, two critical and one important advisory from VMware. Now, one of the critical advisories is about the Java Spring vulnerabilities. The second uh, critical advisory does affect uh, the Workspace One access uh, product and actually fixes eight different vulnerabilities ranging from remote code execution to authentication, a bypass, then uh, some cross-site request forgery uh, vulnerabilities, and also a local purge escalation vulnerabilities. So in particular, if you're looking at all these eight uh, vulnerabilities together, you're seeing kind of a full compromise of the system, which is why uh, VMware suggests that you do apply this update quickly. No known exploit is available at this point. 
And Palo Alto did release a bulletin showing which of their products are still awardable to a CVE 2022-0778 and what patches are available. Now, uh, this is the denial of service vulnerability in Open SSL. I wouldn't really rate this as critical. It's really sort of more of one of these important ones, given that it's just denial of service, but something that you should address, but uh, nothing really that you should lose a lot of sleep over. And last Friday, we got an update from Apple for macOS Monterey, also for iPadOS and iOS, fixing two vulnerabilities that were already exploited in the wild. Intego now points out that we still haven't seen a patch for the older version of macOS, Bixer and Catalina. Turns out one of the vulnerabilities, the Apple AVD bug, does not affect the older version of the operating systems. Uh, that was a component was just added in uh, Monterey. But the Intel graphics driver bug does affect these older versions of the operating system and probably should be patched, but has not been patched yet. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.